For today's draft challenge, I can only take players that are RFAs IRL. Just in case there's someone watching this that goes, what did he just say? It is players that are restricted free agents in real life. So they will not be hitting the open market when their contract expires. At least that's my understanding. Maybe I'm even wrong. Even I'm learning today because I had no idea what actually qualified someone as an RFA versus a UFA. But this is interesting. A player may only declare himself to be an unrestricted free agent if he is over the age of 27 or has played in the league a minimum of seven years. The more you know. Because I'm using this website, Sport Track, that basically has all the upcoming free agents, and I see that Victor Olofsson is an RFA even though he's 28, which means I guess he hasn't played in the league for more than seven years. Or I guess it's more than six years, but at least seven. Anyway, hopefully this website's accurate because my level of knowledge for hockey management in this regard is very bird's eye, as you can probably already tell. All right, it is finally time to find out which team we will be drafting for, and this time around it's gonna be, boom, the Pacific All-Stars. No, re-roll. The Seattle Kraken. Wow, I don't know if we've ever got them either. This is like back-to-back -back drafts where we got teams that we never get. I will not be realigning the divisions. However, I will be turning Fantasy Draft on, Owner Mode off, and Jabroni off. Also Fog of War. No thank you. Not down. Let's go ahead and get started here. Which draft is- Oh wait, uh, 14. I forgot I was supposed to do that. Oh, I was kind of close. We got 18. So we're right near the middle. Jason Robertson seems like a pretty good way to start. Loaded with abilities. And on top of that, 92 overall. Oh uh, yeah. I cannot lie to you, I feel like this draft is going to be harder than I thought. But we're going with Jeremy Swayman, he's 88 overall. Get on the team. Bowen Byram. 3.8 million. And an RFA. So there you go. Philip Ronick, another defenseman. I'm not sure what the handedness situation is, and I'm not too worried about it because we have seemingly slim pickings. So, gonna just take whoever I can get. Michelli, 84 overall. We do already have a left winger. And we have no other forwards, so this is rough, but it is what it is. Casey Middlestat is another good player for us, and he's a centerman, which we need. I'm sort of just looking for centers right now. The first one I came across here is Frosty the Snowman. So, let's go ahead and get that contract signed. Nicholas Hag, we meet again, and you are on my team again. I feel like I've taken him before, right? Probably multiple times. Maybe I'm making that up. Also, if they signed an extension, I don't care. I'm going based off of their current contract, because otherwise... This would be a dumpster fire. We're doing all right for defensemen. And Dante Fabro is another good addition. Another defenseman? I don't know what to do. Olofsson's near the top of the list on this thing I'm looking at, so... Yeah, there you go. Luster Reinen, 81 overall. Are we even gonna get to the cap space? Actually, we haven't really made a whole lot of picks, but... Yeah, this team's gonna be something. You already know. It's another center. It is Dylan Dubé. 81 overall. 2.3 million. What a draft pick. Is a 79 overall goalie as our backup ideal? No. But it's gonna be our situation regardless. Luke is a player that we can draft. So you will be drafted. And a right winger, so that works out quite well. If our team does even remotely good, I am going to be blown away. Geeky will be joining the team as well. There will be no shortage of centermen on this team. However, right now we're going after a right winger in Allison. Actually, we're almost done here. We only need three more forwards and a defenseman. No, two more forwards and a defenseman. Okay, we got a few options here. These three are all RFAs and two of them are right-handed. One of them is left-handed. So let's see what we need. So we've got right, left. Okay, that's good. Right. Okay. We need a left-handed defenseman. Welcome to the team. Logan Stanley. Ryan Paling. I still remember when this guy got like a hat trick his first game in the NHL or something like that. But anyway, you will be eligible for this draft and as a result, taken because we don't have a lot of choice. My English is on point today, which is just par for the course. The final selection for the draft will be Max Jones. He's a left wing slash right wing. We got nowhere near the cap and I really don't see our team doing well. But you never know, maybe they will dig deep and get her done. So the AI took Tyler Myers, which we will probably have to send down to the minors, but other than that, it should just be the team. 
I also did not draft you, Noah, but look at this team's chemistry. Tyler Myers, you gotta go, and so does Dower Nilsson. And I can't do it because we'll be below the cap. Love that. How do we have a million centers and the best lines puts Max Jones? No. I mean, I'll move... Paling in there, I guess. And there we go. It's another plus one. So the chemistry is going crazy. And... Oh? He's scratched anyway? Alright, that makes my life easier. Thank you. Byram has one ability. Robertson's loaded up. And our goalies also have none. So I think this team gets like 33 wins. And we miss the playoffs. Obviously. I'm just looking at the contracts quick here, and I think we're okay. Everyone looks to be in RFA, so... Except for Myers. What? I've been lied to! Alright, well, Olufsen's gotta go then. I was also lied to about Luce Reinen. Oh. But. It looks like there was a contract extension that takes him to UFA, and this 1.6 is RFA. Is that the same situation for Olufsen? No. No, it is not. Alex Steves, you want to come play in the NHL? Yeah, you do. We're losing our first line right winger. If this messes up the chemistry really bad, I'm going to cry. All right, Steves, get in there for Olofsson. That gets rid of the plus one. Yeah, this hurts. I can move Allison up and we still get a plus one. Doesn't work with Luke. What about... Oh, but he's only left. He's left slash right. So what if I do this? Okay. Makes our first line decent, and I can move Dubé up, and that gives our third line a plus two. Now we're cooking. Yeah, this works for me. So we got Michelli, Middlestat, and Robertson as our first line. Luke with Morgan and Dylan. I still think we're probably getting like 30, low 30s for wins, I'll say that. So Robertson gets the most points with 72. We end up with 33 wins. Here we go. One more check, just to be sure. Scratched. Yeah, okay, we're golden. Maybe if we're doing decent by the trade deadline, and by decent, I mean not dead and completely out of it, then we could try to trade for an RFA and get rid of some draft picks just to make it interesting, but I don't foresee that being the case. We were on a three-game winning streak, and then Vancouver said, hey, I'm going to delete you. And after that, we've just never been the same. Uh, no, I don't think so. Maybe even saying 33 wins was bold. We still aren't last in the division though. We have a few games at hand, but... Oh! Four game winning streak! Fire the boys up! And now we're last in the division by quite a lot. So I'm going to make us a buyer and we're gonna enter the deadline and hopefully there's a good RFA here that we can go after. Doesn't look like it. Nope, we're just gonna continue to suffer. Couturier and Camp headed to the Ottawa Senators in exchange for two draft picks this year. That's a trade. A first for next year, a second this year, and Corpy Solo headed to Arizona in exchange for Jonas Brodeen and Frankie Vetrano. Another one, holy crap. Two firsts this year and next year, Broberg and a second for Pytrangelo, Barabanov, and Vlasic Pickles. They must have done an update of some sort that addressed trades not happening because there's like a million. The last two drafts we've done, Tarasenko and Orlov headed to Vancouver in exchange for two firsts. People just throwing around draft picks like it's nothing. First, especially. And Evans. This has to be the last one. Lindholm and a fourth. In exchange for a first and Couture. Nope, we're not done yet. A first... Going to the Golden Knights in exchange for Nick Schmaltz and a 7th. There we go. If you were to just make a team of RFAs minus the draft aspect, they might actually do alright. But having to draft, aka other teams are also taking these players, makes it very, very difficult, as you can clearly see. Alright, let's try to win out here. No? No, not quite. Actually, we're not in the playoffs, so I'm going to sim up to here, and then we can take a look at the two lines of the Stanley Cup finalists. It is a Calgary-Carolina final. The Flames have Will Nye the Hockey Guy, Sidney the Kidney, and Zuccarello. The second line is Brian Rust playing with Kadri and Marcheseau. They do have a good team. Defensively, also great. Shabbat and Spurgeon. Burns, OEL. Wow. Understandable. Have a nice day. Carolina, on the other hand, they have Verhage playing with Barzal and Pasta. 
Jeez, Dano is their third line center. Again, this is sort of checking out. Pelic with Chernak. They brought Freddy back. Who is going to emerge victorious? It is Calgary, and I think it was a sweep. We did finish last in the division with 66 points, and Calgary won our division. 104 might be enough for the league? No. There is a few teams ahead of them, actually. Tampa Bay, one of those squadrons. They won the President's Trophy, and they also have a fairly solid-looking team. I mean... No, yeah, it's good. Their second line is Mikheyev, Shen, and Ovechkin. Carolina finished 19th? And went all the way to the finals. I kind of wish they won now. Let's see if we were dead last in the league. No. Two teams below us. Yeah! Oh, wow. Over point a game for Jason Robertson and almost 40 goals. Middlestat was 78, so that first line actually did all right, you know? Philip Ronick with 57. What a mad lad. The goaltending wasn't there. Swayman had... Barely, but a sub-900 save percentage and a 340 GAA. I mean, to be fair, he didn't have much help, so yeah. I'll let him slide by this time. Bobrovsky has the most wins with 43 and nearly a 920 save percentage. Hellebuck and Sorokin both up there with 42. I mean, yeah, he put up over 100 recently, so 94 for EK65 is definitely a possibility. Quinn Hughes, 86. McCarr, 85. What a year for defensemen. Sidney the Kidney would win the Art Ross with 101. And Pasta gonna win the Rocket Richard. He had 98. So did Nate and Jack. Oh, wow. Look at that. What are the odds? We were not a part of the playoffs, but we can still look and see how some players did here. Hellebuck, again, could win the Conn Smythe. Will he? Probably not. Let's go to defensemen, where we see Brent Burns leading 15 points in 21 games. Not too shabby. Ovechkin had 29 in 21 games. That's really good. Giroud, 26. Kaprizov? Pasta? Is it gonna be March or so? Come on. You have to give it to Hellebuck. You have to. Team awards? We already know what's going on here. Individually, Sidney Crosby does get the Art Ross and the Hart. Art Hart combo? Stay strong. No surprises here. EK65 getting the Norris and the Lady Bang. Bedard with the Calder on Detroit. Played with Patrick Kane. They do give it to Marchessault. That is unbelievable, man. Hellebuck got finessed. Bobrovsky wins the Vesna. The Jennings goes to Varlamov. Marty the One Man Party gets the Bill Masterton. Franco grabbing the Jack Adams this season. Crosby with another one. Another one. And we already saw that Pasta won the Rocket Richard with 58. Here is your playoff tree. It wasn't a sweep in the finals, actually. But yeah, Calgary never struggled. They went to six games once. And other than that, it was all five-game series. Well, thank you for watching. If you attempt this draft, let me know if yours went better. And hopefully it does. It'd be pretty impressive if it did worse. You don't have to, but like, if you could like and subscribe, that'd be kind of fire. I'm just saying. All right, on that note, appreciate you. And I will see you soon.